Hey, welcome back to the channel, and today I'm showing <clears throat> drawer number eight in my collection. And so uh, I've got a pretty big collection. I'm splitting it up into drawers. This is drawer eight. In this drawer, it is um, exclusively um, Eng English cutlery. So there's 51 pieces here. Uh, all of them are English except one. I have one. Uh, Belgian uh, army class knife, but uh, rest of them are English, and um, 21 different manufacturers represented, and about 21 different patterns, so just a fabulous uh, collection, almost all of my Civil War um, uh, knives, they come from this collection, and um, Almost all of my ivory comes from this collection. So, um, really fascinating one. And I hope you'll join me in the video to check it out. All right, welcome back to the Fortified Castle. Uh, had a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend. Um, it's kind of a somber time when we uh, reflect back on those that gave everything for us. and um, But it's a good time to get together with family and uh, take a break and reflect. And um, head back off on Tuesday, hard charging into that job. And uh, so uh, today we're going to look at this eighth drawer. First I want to uh, say hi to all of my viewers. And... Um, I really appreciate y'all, your comments, your likes, your shares, and uh, I just welcome you to the channel. I hope you like this kind of thing, because I have a lot of it. I got some other stuff, too. So, um, let's take a visual tour first. And so, uh, uh, this all fits in a drawer that's uh, 14 by 22. A lot of different kind of knives in here. Um, the only thing they have in common is that they are all, uh, almost all of them are English, but some really cool knives, some really, um, beautiful knives, and, um, you know, we'll take you through this a little bit, uh, so you can enjoy it. All right, here we go. So I have some uh, English clasp knives. Uh, this is from ER, ooh, ERA, which is a uh, James Baker trademark. It's probably interwar between World War I and World War II. I don't have any wartime uh, class, army class pieces. I don't know why. They're a dime a dozen. Um, this is one uh, probably shortly after the war. And uh, those are really cool. Here's one, I think, from 58. So they got to um, 1953. Uh, so this is what they turned into for a long time. Up until the 90s, I believe, they were this style. These things are just huge. Uh, big old sheep's foot blade. And these things were just behemoths. Um, good, strong pulls on them. Uh, way more than they needed to be and you can see here. It's J.H. Thompson uh, Cutlery, uh, but I'm, I'm not familiar with that maker. I couldn't find a lot of information on them. This is a Humphreys really nice uh, Cow horn here. It's not unusual. You can see it was dyed green a lot of that has worn off and the knife is just in fast fantastic uh, shape and um, really this is huge too, by the way. This is the biggest uh, double-end uh, knife I've ever seen. And it's almost four inches. Pretty big. Uh, got an E-Trick. This is a really nice uh, knife. Really nice. You can see Real Pampa. This is a Lockwood Brothers. Got two Lockwood Brothers. This one's really cool. It's a shadow knife, so the um, 
tang is hidden and that's why you have it crawling up here to, to hide the tang on the other side it gives it a very unique design this is also an unusual knife it's a really large uh, um, uh, split whittler split in whittler this one's pretty old right here again uh, cow horn okay uh, another CJ Johnson really nice looking uh, sleeve board here and uh, again cow horn really nice uh, highly polished really like it and you see the tang right there all of these are in really good shape this is a um, uh, sailor's knife uh, what's unusual about this is it is a scout knife look at that so yeah the uh, scouts originated in England and then came to America and these guys were uh, sailing scouts and so uh, they learned to sail yeah, this is another C. Johnson. Just absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite pieces. Look at the bone on this. And, uh, of course, this little sportsman's knife right here. Just pristine shape. The flag uh, tang stamp on there. It's kind of rare. Just look at the work on this knife. Just absolutely fantastic. This is uh, Alfred uh, Field and Son. If for those uh, for your, um, those of you familiar with Alfred Field, he he did originate in uh, uh, England and also opened offices in America. But this is a nice uh, printer that would date to the turn of the century and um, genuine stag pretty cool this is uh one of my gems here this is a hillard and thompson a lot very unusual about this knife the work is exceptional look at the uh work back on this this is not milled the whole knife uh, except for the mother of pearl is silver you can see the silver inlay in there and um look at the detail on this uh inlay Look how it has more marks in there. See that? Just absolutely phenomenal work on this. And um, this would date to 1851. Another really unusual thing about this knife is it comes from Birmingham. That's what that anchor stands for right there. And uh, most knives were made in Sheffield, so it's just really uh, unusual to find a knife that was not. So a little tobacco smoker's knife for you across the pond who know who Moffitt's is. And it's a uh, Fisher produced this. This is another oldie and really exceptional knife, uh, John Baker. Again, just unbelievable quality on this knife. Little tiny knife. Has a... Uh, Everything works on this knife. If I can get it out with my big fat fingers. You have the buttonhole hook. That's his uh, tank stamp. The Phoenix. Really cool. Really cool knife. This is another obscure one. Dates to the 18, middle of the 1800s. And it's an H&S. This is another uh, rare knife right here. It is brass, as you can see. It has an unusual rose color to it. it may in fact be gunmetal. Um, you see here, Bram Ellison, Carlisle Works. So there was a uh, Wilson Hawks and Ellison who had a very successful, long lasting um, metal works. Um, and I had to really do some figuring to figure this out. But Ellison is, this Ellison is the Ellison that was with Bram 
Hawks and Allison. And um, I guess he produced the knife on his own. It's really rare to see his name alone on a knife. This is a beautiful uh, single blade Jack Thomas Turner. Just fantastic knife. This is another uh, Thomas Turner. It's a little boat knife or yacht knife. You got a little tiny marlin spike right there. Old style can opener. And a little blade right here. This is all nickel. And if you put uh, silver up next to nickel, you can see the difference. This is wider and shinier. And nickel has kind of that yellow look. You probably wouldn't even notice that if you were just looking at it. You'd assume that it was stainless steel, but it is uh, nickel 100%. You can see it right there. That is also unusual, but nickel is very resistant to corrosion, which is why it was used. Here's another one, Sam Buckley and Sons. These were steel makers, and uh, they sent this over to the U.S. for Century Tool Metal Company. Uh, probably late 1800s and they probably made this knife although I can't prove it look at the design of this knife just really weird design three bladed really weird mm. this is a really cool and old knife this is genuine ivory. I know it doesn't look yellow. That's because somebody soaked it in oil. And um, it is genuine ivory though. Four blade, swell center, balloon in pattern. Kind of unusual. Silver braided rope going through it. All these blades work. They all have good snap. And... They're all in good shape. Remarkable little knife here. Martin Brothers. Uh, here's another Martin Brothers that dates to the Civil War period. And this is ivory. And you can see this uh, checkerboard diamond pattern cut into this ivory. And check this out. So they cut the lines in the ivory, they cut lines in the pens to match the lines in the ivory. See that? Is that remarkable? So you get the ivory, you have the diamond line running here, and it just cuts right through, right there, the pen. That's craftsmanship there for you. That is craftsmanship. Martin Brothers. <clears throat> this is a Joseph Martin and Son. Another really old one that dates to the Civil War. This probably dates to uh, 1840. Right here. Beautiful ivory. In fantastic shape. This is an eyewitness, just a little, uh, you know, stainless steel pen, pen knife. And then everything else always through there is um, Westing Home. So this is, uh, as you can see, an NKCA knife. It is a three-bladed um, uh, canoe and green bone. And this is a Rogers... Westinghome. So this is when Rogers bought Westinghome out in 1981. Still has some etching on it. Nice knife. This is the only knife I have like this. I couldn't wait to get one. It's a very old um, style lockback. This does not date to 1840, but that's when the lockbacks came out. And they were front locks, actually. The first ones had the locks way up here. This is kind of a, almost a mid-lock right there. But um, look at the action on that. It just drops. And um, 
solid as could be, dates between 1890, 1910. All of these were listing homes. Really big stock knife. This is five inches, I believe. Crazy. Yeah, almost five inches. Four and three quarters. Beautiful piece of Coca Bola. Here's another one, genuine tortoise shell. Really nice knife, and it is Whittler. See it right there, split back Whittler. Really nice. This is a jumbo jack. Thing is thick. You wouldn't know it until you put it up next to another knife. Then you can see it's a lot thicker than your average knife. And uh, this dates to 1870. The tank stamp puts it at that. It's in pristine condition. Look at that. Beautiful. It's probably it could go up to 1890, I think. But I don't think that's an 1890 knife. This is an office knife. The office was worn off. Really nice uh, Westinghome knife. Man, this is, these Westinghomes are just beautiful knife. It's called a tine knife. It's a peach pruner. Uh, the difference between peach pruners and other pruners is your cutting edge follows that curve around and comes down. And that, it, the, the edge follows the uh, top of your, uh, top of your back spine of your blade. And it just same with all the way around. That's a peach pruner. It's a large split back whittler. Um, just regular bone. Beautiful knife here. Just fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful knife. All these are Westing homes. Here's an earlier one in uh, Mother of Pearl. Look at that Mother of Pearl on there. Look at that. Wolstinghome just knew how to make a knife. This is a beautiful Stockman in, in uh, Ebony. Beautiful. Look at that ebony. This is the opposite end jack, serpentine, black bone. You don't see too much black bone. Let's check in on that. The other blade there. Beautiful knife. This one is a phlegm knife, three different phlegms. Dates to the Civil War period. Whoop. Pretty cool. Brass. This sits right down in there. This is a Wolstinghome uh, multiplayer. I think this is probably 1990s. I think. It's awesome. Well made. Pretty cool. And a Westinghome razor. Got a little advertising there.
All right, and below that, we got another beautiful little um, sportsman's knife. This actually has a um, hoof pick on it. Ooh, I mean, and this is small, so you can see right there. Let me see. Let me get another one. This is about a regular size jack. And you can see how small it is. So why would you have a hoof pick on a knife like this? Well, you know, um, they say... Uh, General Jackson liked to use these hoof picks to pick stones out of his boots. And remember the roads weren't clean back then. They were dirt, muddy. And um, so uh, you might have this on a, a little pen knife like this to clean your boots out. Pretty good shape on this knife. Again, this late 1800s, early 19th century. The bone is just, man, I love that. It's really old and worn. I think this is probably from the 1880s, this knife. Here's a really old um, jackknife in genuine stag. This thing's been through the mill, uh, but still works. And still has a lot of blade on it. And this is uh, uh, I bought some Peace and Company, so that date would place this into the 18 um, 50s. Really old knife and a rare knife, and it works. Gator shut. Here's another oldie. Wade Wingfold Robotham, just a pruner, genuine stag, mostly worn, mostly worn. Look at the color. Uh, stag this old, when you're talking about a knife from the 1860s, inside of this, the stag is just brown. It's basically dead, uh, barely being held together. And so you got to be really careful with these knives. Another sportsman's knife, Southern and uh, Richardson, just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Exquisitely made, everything works. I don't have the little attachments that go in there. Look at that bone. Genuine stack. Fantastic. nest knife this would date between 1890 and 1910. Uh, this is the old Sanor Sanor pruner w Sanor and this is bone and you would prune with there and then split the branches with this bone right here pretty cool some uh, rogers here this is a Wade, oh, Wade and Butcher. Really cool knife here. Unusual blade. Got another one. And then it has a third blade. And so this is a sp three spring and it has a flim blade on it. Pretty unusual. Cast iron. That is the trademark for Wade and Butcher. This is a little more recent Wade and Butcher, probably the uh, 60s, 50s, 60s, and that is in um, Shell, Cowhorn. Pretty nice. This one is in turtle shell. This one's a little older. Not too much older. Maybe the 40s or 50s. Beautiful tortoise shell. Wow, made knives. Just gorgeous. 
and a couple Richards up there. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the uh, look, and uh, really appreciate you guys dropping by. Support the channel and check it out. Thanks again.